Welcome to today's video. Today, we are going to be looking over my most recent blood test lab results, and I'm going to review them for you. I'm going to tell you what they mean to me. I'm going to tell you the things that I'm, that I'm looking for, things that I'm looking out for, what the different results mean, and the conclusions that I draw. And I'm going to be doing this in a very holistic perspective. So instead of just seeing where one of my lab markers is, is out of range, and then trying to force it back into range using a medication or like changing something, I'm going to ask the question, okay, why is this out of range? Why is this elevated? Why is this low? What does this indicate? How is this a clue? What does this mean? So we're going to, we're going to put on our investigators caps. We're going to do, do like Sherlock Holmes, you know, get your little, your little cap, get your magnifying glass. And instead of just saying like symptoms are bad, blood test results out of measurements are bad. We're going to say, okay, this is a clue. What is this clue telling me? How can I use this clue to piece together this puzzle and find the solution that I'm looking for, which is health and wellness and energy and remission from all of your different health problems. So I'm going to do this for me today. This is my own blood tests and I'm going to share my screen with you now and you're going to be able to see them. So if you'll just give me a second, I will share my screen with you and you'll be able to see my blood testing results. So I'm just going to start at the top. I'm going to go through and I'm going to tell you my conclusions and my, and my thoughts. And there's some juicy stuff in here. You know, I'm going to give you a little, little, little teaser. My, my liver enzymes elevated. So we're going to get to that. That's towards the bottom. So if you want to understand why my liver enzymes are elevated, ooh, we get, you have to wait till the end of the video. So make sure you watch through. This is going to be really helpful. I'm not just going to be talking about my, my results. I'm going to be talking about testing in general. I'm going to be talking about what, what this means, what this represents. And I'm, I'm going to give you tips. So hopefully you'll be able to go through your own testing and look at it and be like, okay, this isn't just a bunch of numbers. I actually have some context as to what this means. So that's what I'm hopefully going to be providing you today. So first of all, these things at the top, these are, these are in, in my case, these are pretty boring because they're pretty much almost exactly what they were in the last test. So just explaining these columns for you. So this actually came in three, in three documents. And I just kind of chopped them up and stuck them together just so that they're very presentable. And it also allowed me to cut all of my personal information out, like my address. I don't really want, don't really want to put that on the internet. So I, so you don't see the column heads, so I can just name them for you. So this column here and this one, this is sort of like the calculations column for it. This is my most recent test results. This one here, this column here is the, the unit of measurement. This column here is the reference range. So this is kind of like the goal. This is the target. This is what, what healthy looks like. Some of these reference ranges are not the most accurate and I'll talk about that. But generally, otherwise, this is sort of where you want to be. And this little column here is my last test result. So these are the, test, the tests that I did in, I don't know if there's a date. Yeah, so these tests I did about seven months ago. So this is my, my recent. So this was like two weeks ago. This column here is my recent blood test. And this column here is my blood test from about seven months ago. And this is really important. This is a huge, this is a hugely important thing. So whether your numbers are in or out of range, that is important, but you also have to look at it in context. You have to look at where your test results were previously. So you're going to see maybe some of my things are out of range, but maybe they're closer to what closer to being in range than before. And in that case, it means what you're doing is working. That's a good thing. So even though it's out of range, it's closer to range. That's a really good thing. But then you may have other things where things are moving out of range and you might think, okay, maybe I need to put a little bit of more focus there. Maybe I need to put a little bit more attention. And maybe things haven't really changed very much, which means your approach probably isn't working. It's probably not doing what it needs to do because you want to be moving towards that, to that range optimally. So most of this stuff up here is basically like, so you've got like hemoglobin and you've got, this is basically just some red blood cell function. To be honest, unless you have like, like some kind of obviously diagnosable anemia, you're probably, mo I, I'll be honest, I don't think I've ever seen anyone have these things out of, out of range or severely out of value. It, and I've looked over like 500, you know, it's unless you're literally like dying, you know, you have anemia to the point where you're about to die or if things are going really, really bad, you probably won't see these, these out of reference. Quite uncommon. So not really much to talk about there. The second one is also... We can't really go into specific detail. I'm not going to talk about what each of these different things do because personally, I don't know. And that's okay. You don't need to know everything to heal. That's fine. So I don't know the individual functions of what these different types of immune cells does. I just know these are immune cells. And what is really interesting for me here is if you look at my previous testing results and my current testing results, my current testing results, they're all higher. 
So in this one, you actually want to be looking at the percentages because the one it, it's showing from previous is percentages. All of these percentages are higher, which to me is just a, a very, very, uh, very powerful indicator that my overall immune system is stronger than it used to be. Because I, if you have an active infection, maybe you'd see one of these really high or one of them really low. If you're in an autoimmune disease, you'll, you'll see like if you have cancer or something, these will be like all over the place. You know, they might be up, they might be down. The fact that all of mine were lower and now all of them are higher. And when I say higher, I mean significantly higher. Some of these are at almost double as, as, as present, which means my, my immune system has basically doubled in strength, which is amazing. And what's really important here is we're looking at lab tests, but then we want to try and match this with symptoms. So it's like, okay, the lab test gives us a result, but how does this match up with my experience of reality? And I can tell you that since these last seven months, I literally have developed my immune function back. So if you, if you don't, if you just click on this video, and you don't know very much about me. I was extremely sick for at least like five years or so. And during that time, I had no immune response whatsoever. Everyone around me would be getting, getting a cough. They would get all phlegmy. I remember my dad, he had an extremely strong immune system. He'd basically like get, he'd, he'd be stuck in bed for like three days, you know, sweats, chills, headache, everything. And then he'd be fine. You know, he'd kill the virus. He'd be amazing. His immune system was awesome. And then there's me, like nothing would happen to me. I would get no cough, no sore throat not even my lymph nodes would swell up. I would just get a liver pain. My liver would just become inflamed and I would feel really depressed. And that was it. And every time I got a new cold, so everyone else around me gets sick, I just build up this liver pain, this fatigue and this depression. And it just gets stronger and stronger. And this is because my immune system wasn't fighting it. So, because it, it was too busy doing other things. So I just got sicker and sicker and sicker. And these illnesses just accumulated. Whereas now... In the, in the last seven months, and, and even now, I'm actually sick right now. My immune system is kicking ass again. It is strong. It's like every time I travel, I pick up some new bug. My immune system is like, oh, this looks fun. Let's have a fight with this. And it just triggers this massive immune response. And now I'm getting sick. You know, I get a sore throat. I lost my voice a couple of days ago. I get coughs. I get mucus. And this is cool. This is immune function. So what I'm trying to share with you here is it's really important that you look at your lab testing in context with your symptoms. If you just look at lab testing alone, it's useless. It doesn't tell you anything. And symptoms they, symptoms are messages from your body. Your body cannot lie. It doesn't know how to. So it's constantly telling you what is happening inside it all of the time. So if you have symptoms, which give us lots of information, and we know they're true, you know, they cannot be misinterpreted. They're, they, are, they are. And then you combine that with lab testing results. And if those two match up, you know you're on a pretty good perspective as as to what's actually happening. You know you're on the right track with understanding what's happening inside your body. So overall, me seeing this, extremely happy. I know my immune system is getting stronger and I knew that based on how I was able to get sick and how my immune response had changed. And now I actually have, have like measurable evidence of it on this test. You know, these immune cells are, they take up a higher proportion of the percentage of my blood. There are more of them in my blood, which is awesome. It means I have an immune system again. So that's really cool. So for anyone else that's reading this, as I was saying, you just want to basically see if you've got some that are above range or below range, they'll flag, you know, they'll probably be like highlighted in red or there'll be a little mark somewhere. This is basically just an indicator of your immune system state. So if you know you have chronic infections, it's possible that these may be fluctuating. If you know you have some kind of autoimmune disease or some kind of uh, illness that affects the immune system, like cancer, like for example, if you've done chemotherapy, you'd probably see all of these markers below range. But you would expect that, you know, that's what you would expect to see, because you have to look at the testing in, in combination with like symptoms and what's actually happening in your life. You know, the test doesn't tell you everything. You have to look at it in a, in a context. So moving down here, we've got uh, platelets. Platelets, again, this is pretty much the same as it was last time. So not, not, very, not very interesting. This one also about the same as what it was last time. This one is in the bottom of the range. So the range here is 9.3 to 12.1. And this is on 9.3. So it's on the bottom of that threshold. Excuse me. <laughs> the thing is, even if it's on the lower end of the threshold, it's, it's okay, you know, it's in range. Even if it's a little bit below, even if it's a bit above. It, again, it's all about looking at it in context. A blood test is just a snapshot in time. You know, it may have been that, I mean, if you think about this, it's actually quite interesting. They're measuring your platelets. 
in your blood when they've just stuck a needle into your vein. You know, I'm sure that on some level that is going to trigger some kind of reaction inside your body and is going to do something to your platelets. You know, you, you, you really have to just see it as a snapshot at that time. So as far as platelets are concerned, the biggest thing would be you get a cut and your blood doesn't clot and the platelets don't work. I know that if I cut myself, my, 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 my blood can coagulate fine. I form a scab, no problem. I don't have a problem here. So it's just about in range it, and the symptomology of it is fine. There's no cause for concern here. I'm not worried about it at all, even though it's on the bottom part of the range. It doesn't worry me. Here we have ferritin. This is, this is in range, but this is something I would be, this is something I'm more interested in because currently my energy is not where I want it to be. And as I said, I know I have cold, I have a cold, I have viruses going on, my immune system is doing lots of different stuff. I have more work than I've ever had in my whole life. So yes, I have other factors that are contributing to my, my feeling tired, but I have a feeling that maybe there is something to do with, um, maybe there's some kind of like anemia, ferritin thing. I don't know. Maybe there is. And this makes me think, okay, maybe I want to do some investigation. So obviously it's not completely at the bottom of the range. You know, it's not, so here the range is 22 to, I believe it's 322. It's actually a bit hard even for me to see. And my score is 71. So this is quite low. So I might consider doing some investigation to this and maybe just thinking about, okay, maybe I do need to boost the amount of ferritin. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> See, I wasn't lying. I really am sick. My throat is very tingly. <laughs> so I may need to consider, there's two ways you could look at this. You could look at, do I have enough ferritin in my diet? And is my body able to absorb the ferritin that I'm eating? It's possible that with low stomach acid or with stomach acid imbalances or with microbiome imbalances, even if you're eating enough ferritin, you may not be absorbing it. Remember, it's not just about what you eat. It's about what you absorb as well. So this may be something for me to do some more investigation into. And what this would look like for me, what would I, so I'm like, okay, I see a marker in a test. I want to do some research on it. What am I going to do? Well, it's probably what everybody would do. I go on Google and I type, what does this mean? What does this do? You know, you can use Google as an amazing resource. I know that like doctors will say like, oh, you shouldn't do too much Google research. You know, it's very dangerous. A little bit of knowledge is a dangerous thing. And I get that, but the thing is, you can go and read Google scholarly articles and, and scientifically reference papers of randomized controlled trials that are what medicine is based on. And you have access to all of that on the internet. So yeah, if you go on a, a blog post of some random person that's just sharing their personal experience, in a way, kind of like what I'm doing on this video here, you know, this is not medical advice. So don't take it as medical advice, but that doesn't mean the internet is not a fantastic place for you to conduct research. It's the best place on the whole planet for you to conduct research. So you just have to be careful about what you discern from what you learn. You know, what are you going to use and how are you going to apply it? You have to be careful. And you don't just take what anyone says as fact, as science. You know, do your own due diligence, do your own research, see if it feels right to you. You know, I might say something and you might think that doesn't sound right. Challenge it. Don't just take what people are saying at self value, do your own research. But this means do your own cross referencing. Research, if you've got five different blogs that all say the same thing, maybe you're getting onto, maybe you're getting somewhere. Maybe there's a consensus there. Maybe there's a truth to be found. But for me, my research looks like I'm going to go on Google and I'm going to type. So this is ferritin. It's ferritin. I'm going to say, what is ferritin? What is the function of ferritin? What causes low ferritin? What gut microbes eat ferritin? What is the, the process for the body synthesizing ferritin? What does, and I might do all this research and come to a conclusion that actually it's completely fine. I don't need it to be any higher. It's no problem at all. Or I might decide, okay, I need to do something about it. And then I'll take that kind of action and I'll maybe I'll do some research into deciding what it is that I want to do. So that's kind of my process. I use Google. Google is awesome. The internet is an amazing resource. Just, just be mindful of what you're actually doing. So now we're moving on to, and also, so the one, th the one thing before I just finish up on this ferritin is I don't have a previous result. So I, I didn't do this test last time I did it, last time I took a blood draw. So I, I, I'm, again, this is just a, a random isolated single blood draw. I don't know if my level went up. I don't know if it went down. This is just one spec in time. So I don't know. That, that makes it harder. So having previous results can make, this, can make this more helpful because you have more context. So I don't have that. So this is kind of a bit of a variable for me. So down here, 
So this just means blood. And here we're going to look at, so this is A1C. So I believe this is basically just an indicator of uh, inflammation inside the body. There was also another, mark, another marker that you can use that's called CRP, C-reactive protein. Unfortunately, I didn't uh, tick it when I did my testing results. So I didn't get it on this one. Um, but it's basically just an indicator of, I think, it, I think they generally use it as a, a marker for measuring cardiovascular risk, which is sort of just a general indicator of inflammation inside your body, particularly inside your blood vessels, obviously, because it's inside your blood. But if you've got inflammation inside the messenger system of your body, you probably have inflammation somewhere else too. So mine is below maximum range, which I'm actually surprised at because I know I have a lot of inflammation going on inside my body right now. I know I have lots of colds and viruses. I know I've got lots of like physical injuries. As you're gonna, as I as I mentioned, my and I think you see it down here, my liver enzymes are elevated. You know, I have inflammation going on. So I'm actually surprised this is not higher than it is. But it's still, even though it is probably more elevated than it than it would be optimally, it is still within the range. So it's not really, not really a big problem. And again, as I said, I know I have inflammation going on. So I, I really know that it's fine, but it's just interesting to see it put on, put on paper. So next we have glucose. So this is, so obviously this is a blood test that is a fasting blood test. So this means you are doing the blood test when you haven't had any food first thing in the morning. If you've done a blood test before, it's probably been like this, you probably know what I'm talking about. So 85, so the, the range, the optimal range for, for blood glucose is 60 to 110. Mine was 85. So that is, I'll be honest, pretty much smack bang right in the middle. I think that is, that is actually exactly in the middle. So it's like the optimal range. I'd say being on the lower end of this range doesn't really make that much difference because, I mean, personally, I'm not a, I, I'm, a, I'm, a I'm a big breakfast person. You know, it's very rare for me to leave the house without having had any food. And this is this is me going out to do a blood test when I haven't had any food. So it's gonna it's gonna distort what my blood my blood results actually are because I'm my body is not used to that. It's not something that I usually do. I find it quite stressful going out without having food. But even with with all of that being said, my number is exactly right in the middle. And if you look at my my previous uh, result over here which is which was 94 it's actually it's actually better it's actually better overall it's it, as i said it's pretty much right in the middle so can't really fault it and i'm going to say i think this may also be interesting just for a couple of people that are that, that are listening to this this is eating the the least restrictive diet i've ever eaten in my whole life so for years i did really strict keto I did, I followed restricted diets for a really long time, basically turned into an eating disorder. I have loads of other content about that on my, on my YouTube channel. So you can just go and look at, I think I've got one video titled, um, how to introduce foods with RFID. If you have food sensitivities and you've, you've re reduced the amount of food in your diet over and over and over and over again, and now it's like a really small amount, go and watch that video. You might find it really insightful, but I'm, I'm what I'm trying to tell you here is my blood sugars are this stable and I eat literally whatever the hell I want. You know, the day before, I, I, I don't, I honestly don't remember. I could have had pizza. I could have had ice cream. I can eat all of these foods again without having a problem. And I mean, you're seeing it here on this. My, my blood sugars, they're still stable. Even having all this sugar, my, my, my blood can handle it. Now, I, I know, I know saying that when I come down here and I start talking about my elevated liver enzymes, I'm going to get some people that say, but your body clearly can't handle all of that processed food. It's clearly elevating in your body and just wait. Okay. I'm going to get there. Just wait. I'm going to go there. Okay. So just give me a minute. We're going to get that. We still have a few things to go through first. So wait. So glucose, pretty happy with that. So these ones here, we've got urea and this is, this is bun. So these are basically just tests that are connected to kidney function. And the reason I did these is I have to, I have had kidney stones in the past as a consequence of mold exposure. So Mold is very much connected with oxalates. Oxalates can form kidney stones if you don't have the right mineral balance inside your body. And if your vitamin D is all messed up and I had a vitamin D overdose and lots of stuff. So I had kidney stones in the past. That was fun. Hopefully I never have another one again. So I just did these to just make sure my kidneys are doing fine. They're doing fine. They're doing great. They're doing awesome. As you can see, I didn't test these previously, but they are well within range. 
So they're totally fine. This one's pretty much right in the middle. This one is on the lower end in the middle. So really cool, good. Cholesterol, this is really interesting. And again, as I said, I know I have inflammation in my body right now, and I'm actually surprised my cholesterol is as low as it is. And what, what I'm even more surprised by is the fact that my, cholesterol, my total cholesterol is actually lower than the last time that I tested it. And that just blew me away because when I did my last test, I actually didn't have as, in, as much inflammation going on in my body as I do right now. And now I have more inflammation and I actually have lower cholesterol, which is amazing. It just shows my body is really getting on top of things. It is really, it's really getting there. You know, I'm making some real progress because, so again, if you, if you don't know much about my past, my cholesterol levels about, so from now, it must be about seven years ago, six or seven years ago. My cholesterol levels were, were five times higher than the safe limit, the, the safe limit. So, yeah. So this was, my total cholesterol was over a thousand, you know, it was really, really high. I can remember the, I think I have another, I have another video all about cholesterol on my channel. So if you want to know more about cholesterol, go watch that. I lowered this completely naturally, no medications, completely, completely natural, not even trying to, you know, if you understand what cholesterol is and how it actually works in your body, you will not try to lower it. Now, like, there will not be your intention because you know it's super important you know precursor to vitamin d precursor to every steroid and stress hormone inside your body every single cell is made out of it your brain is 35 percent cholesterol by dry mass you do not want low cholesterol in your body you want high cholesterol because your body's made out of it and you need it to stay alive so for me this is amazing you know my levels used to be up over a thousand now they're down 218 without any without any intervention and yes, according to these lab tests, this one here, my LDL is slightly elevated. So they want you, you want in optimal range below 130, it's 139. And over here, optimal range is uh, above 60 and mine is 63. So, excuse me. Oh man, it's a bad one. I'm gonna have to take a break. I'm doing so much, doing so much work. <laughs> So where was I? So, okay, yeah, going back to the cholesterol. So what's really, what I find really interesting about these is from a ratio perspective, these are actually really good. You know, yes, my, my LDL is slightly higher than the reference range here, but my HDL is also slightly higher than it too, which means that you've got to remember these things work together. Your body is not just like these isolated things. Everything's working together. And the fact that they, even if, even if they're both really elevated, if they're both really elevated together at the same ratio, I would be more happy with that than them being out of ratio. You know, I don't subscribe to this whole good cholesterol, bad cholesterol thing. Is it doesn't work like that? Again, if you if you want more clarity on understanding cholesterol, go and watch that video that I have. It's awesome. You know, I've got I've got my whiteboard. It's a really cool demonstration talking about like it's amazing. If you have cholesterol questions, just go and watch that video. It will absolutely change your understanding of how cholesterol works. But I'm really happy with this because yes, slightly elevated. But as I've said, it's way lower than it was in the past, you know, five times lower. And I actually have a lot of inflammation going on still. So I would not have been surprised if it was even more elevated than it is. And the fact that it's so low means to me, my body is doing amazing. It's handling inflammation in an amazing way. The cell turnover is good. Uh, my stress hormones, they're, they're getting closer to balance. You know, this is amazing. This is amazing for me. I'm really happy with it. So next we have triglycerides. Uh, this, I'd say triglycerides, there's a, there's a really interesting ratio that you can do. Check out De Dr. Berg. He's got a, a better ratio of, so usually they just take like LDL divided by HDL and they say, oh, this is your cardiovascular risk. That's a really bad way of doing it. A better way to do it, I believe, and check, check, check out Dr. Berg because I think he's the one that showed me this, is you do, I think it's HDL divided by, tri HDL divided by triglycerides. And that gives you a better ratio of, of your cardiovascular risk. Um, but triglycerides, if your triglycerides are elevated, this is a really easy one to lower. All you need to do is incorporate more periods of time in the day where you're not eating. So this could look like incorporating like a fast into your, into your routine once a week, or this could look like using intermittent fasting occasionally or every single day. Again, I have a video about that. So go check that out. Just, again, YouTube, search my name, William Dickinson, how to fast to heal. You'll find a video. It'll be really cool. So triglycerides, they're basically like fat inside your body that has been packaged up into this little kind of like 
delivery mechanism because you think about fat it can't just float around think about when you get a cup and you put water and fat you know they split and the same would happen in your blood so you can't just put fat in your blood it doesn't work like that otherwise it would jam up your body and it would all you you'd have all the fat up here and you'd have all of the water down there it just wouldn't work so your body packages the the fats up in triglycerides so that they're actually usable so if you have hydroglycerides it just means you've got fat that your body is trying to deliver to the cells to be used as fuel but the cells aren't taking it in probably because they're overloaded with glucose instead so if we just give them a period of time where they don't have that glucose fuel source they will take all of those triglycerides in use them up as fuel and your triglycerides will sell so that can be a really quick solution to that so now on to the fun part <clears throat> so let's do this so these are liver enzymes you've got tgo and oh is it yeah it is yeah, so these, are, so these are liver enzymes. So this is, uh, I think it's alanine aminotransferase and aspartate aminotransferase. These are basically indicators of liver health, indicators of what is happening inside your body. So it's, it's less important to look at what the functions of these actually are, but using them more as an indicator of how much work your liver has, how much your liver is struggling currently. So if you can see here, the reference range for this one is less than 34 and my score is 68 and my previous score was 22 so this is this is elevated this isn't just this isn't just higher than it was last time this is exactly double the upper reference range so this is high this is an indicator that there is something going on here so this is something that's worth looking into and i'm also going to cover this one as well so this other one here the um alanine aminotransferase the reference range is 10 to 49 mine's 192 so this is nearly four times higher so this is a really big indicator that there is something going on that there is so overall this kind of indicates that the liver has more work than it's able to keep up with this is an indicator that the liver is struggling to keep up with its jobs and again we're going to come back to this whole idea of okay the lab tests mean one thing what do my symptoms look like? What's actually happening in my life right now? Does this make sense? This makes perfect sense to me. So at the minute, I am doing a lot of work on my liver. It's come to my attention that my liver is really the place that I need to focus right now. I, I have, I've put so much focus on my gut and on like my hormones and overall just rebuilding my body that the liver kind of took a bit of a backseat. I used to do regular fasting. I used to do coffee enemas and juicing and cleansing and i used to do lots of things that i needed to at the time literally just to say to stay functional and i kind of went through a period of time where it was really good for me to just let everything go to just not do anything to live completely unrestricted to just let my body do what it's doing and it's, i mean you've seen the results you know you've seen blood glucose regulating immune cells they're basically double you know my immune system is really strong again it's working However, my liver is now saying, okay, we need to, we need something else. You know, we need something. So symptoms that I've been experiencing from this are just some discomfort in the liver area. So, and I would say a slightly lower energy than I would be expecting as well. And as I, as I mentioned, as we scroll up here, this is one thing that came up with the ferritin. Now that I have this in context, I'm probably thinking, okay, maybe the ferritin is not such a big deal. Maybe I need to focus a little bit more on the liver because this is way, this indicates way more of a problem in this area and the liver can be really connected to energy as well. So now that kind of shifts my focus away from that and makes me think, okay, this is where I need to be doing my work. This is where the body is asking for help right now. And this is where I need to focus my attention. So I have been, I've been working on this. Obviously, obviously I'm, I, as I said, I got the results. I recorded one video, that video I didn't record the audio, so I'm doing it again. So I've had these results for like maybe two and a half weeks now. And one of the things that I'd actually arranged even before I got these testing results back, because I, I knew something was going on, you know, I knew that there was a something missing. I, I could have, I, I, I had a feeling and I used it as an opportunity to reach out and ask for help because even though like I can go over this, you know, I, I, I work with people one-to-one -one and I help them with the health problems, but it's really hard for me to figure out my own because I'm too close to them. So I actually reached out to one of my good friends who actually is also a, a herbalist and asked him for a consultation. So I had a consultation with him, walked through everything that was going on. And he said, 
this really sounds like the place we need to focus is your liver. And this is before I had these test results back. And he said, I think we should try reishi. And I've been doing that. And it has been amazing. It has really been amazing. I would not be surprised if these results, if I did another blood test now, these blood test results are probably half of what they were and, and going down. And I still have work to do. You know, I've only been doing this for, for a short period of time. And I, I can feel the changes already. You know, some joint problems I were having, they're, they're fixing. They're, they're going away. These are like issues I've been working on for like seven or eight months. And I just couldn't figure them out. And it's like now everything is coming together. And I'm seeing this all as these little puzzle pieces that have all connected themselves. My energy is coming up. My immune system is, is getting even stronger, you know, and your liver plays a huge role in immune function too. You can't underestimate the role of the liver in basically every single thing that's happening inside your body. So I'm, I'm working on this and seeing these test results doesn't scare me because I understand that these are just an indicator as to what is already happening. And I'm already working on what's going on inside my body. You know, as I said, I'd already reached out for this consultation before I even had these test results. I already knew something was going on. So I was already working on it. So don't just necessarily see these test results as like, so, so these are the results that they use to test for like liver cancer, for liver cirrhosis, for liver disease and liver failure. So you could see these elevated like twice as high and four times as high and think, oh my God, I'm dying. You could really think that. But, and it's, it's possible, you know, it's possible that if you have one of those serious conditions, you could have enzymes up this high. And that really is something that you want to do some more investigation into. But I know for me, based on my history and my circumstances, so for example, mold exposure, these things that take a toll on the liver. And it's, the thing that I found most interesting is that they were so low previously, the test results were so low. Excuse me just a minute. <laughs> This is a good one. I'm going to have to go through and edit all of those out when I upload this to YouTube. So that's fun. So this is an indicator that my liver is currently working on, on something. You know, it's, it's got a big project that it's working on and it just needs some help. So I'm going to give it that help. I'm going to provide it with what it's asking for and I'm going to help it. And as I provide it the support, the levels will change themselves. You know, trying to change these artificially with the medication or by doing something like kind of extreme, it's like, Okay, maybe, maybe not. Maybe let's just do it gently. Maybe let's just work with the body and, and figure out what's going on and try and get these to figure themselves out. And I'll do another update in a couple of months or so, and we'll see where they're at. And I bet you they will all be fine. Everything will be good. I also really think I should reincorporate fasting into my protocol. But it's been, I'll be honest, it's been really hard. When you have a history of having an eating disorder, the thought of going without food is, is a challenge. I, I won't lie about that. And that is one of the mental and emotional layers that I'm working on on right now you know that is that is that is probably a part of this situation of the elevated liver enzymes is probably because I need to do some fasting and the thing that's stopping me is non-physical it's mental and emotional and I need to work on that and I am I'm working on that at the same time so this healing process comes in layers so moving on now we're going to go to so this one here this little gamma I don't know, I know exactly what this is I'm pretty sure this, again, is also just a liver function enzyme. This one's quite normal, so it's fine. Not worried about that. Just gloss over that. Not really a problem. Now we're getting some fun stuff. So this is thyroid function. So we've got TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, T3 total, and T4 active, and testosterone. We're going to do thyroid first. So what's really interesting to, to look at here is the TSH is in the lower end of the range, and the, the T3 is... I would say it's in the upper middle range and the T4 is in the upper range. And this is really cool again. So this is, we're looking ratios again. So it's not just about where the markers are. It's about where they are in relationship to each other. So if you think about TSH, this is, this is so break the word down, thyroid stimulating hormone. This is a hormone that tells the thyroid gland to function. So the fact that the thyroid stimulating hormone is quite low but the thyroid hormones, T3 and T4, are quite high, is actually really good. Because what it means is the body is using a low amount of thyroid stimulating hormone, and it's having a very powerful effect and stimulating a very large amount of T3 and T4. That's really cool. You know, Having higher TSH here would actually be a bad, a worse thing than having it lower. Having it lower means the thyroid is more sensitive to the hormone, which is actually a good thing. 
So having this in the lower end of this range, whilst having these other two in the higher end of this range is actually really cool. This is a really good sign. And I'm really happy with this. This is an awesome result. I've never tested my thyroid function before. I don't particularly have symptoms of low thyroid. I would say any that I do, they really have a crossover with the liver problem, the liver symptoms. So I'm more leaning towards, okay, it's definitely a liver thing. Let's work on that. <clears throat> so now we move on to testosterone. This is, th first of all, this reference range is absolutely absurd. It's ridiculous. 72 to 853 as a range that's ridiculous. Like the range is so wide, they can mean anything. And it's true that your testosterone will decrease as a man as you get older. But even as like a really old man, it shouldn't be down at 72. That's, that's awfully low. So as, as like a, a really old man, we're talking like a man in your 70s and your 80s, you probably still want your testosterone to be up like 200 to 300 nanograms per deciliter. 72 is really low. Mine is 645, which is, it's not bad. I'll be honest, it's not bad, but it's definitely not the best. As I said, this reference range, I don't think it's particularly accurate. I think if you went back in time and you looked at our, and you looked at our ancestors, so if you went back 100 years or so, this reference range was probably way higher. The reference range back then was probably 500 to 1,200 nanograms per deciliter, is, well, is what it would have been. You know, Obviously, they didn't particularly have reference ranges back then. But overall, testosterone of men has been decreasing a lot over the, over the recent years for several different factors. So... This is not, it's not good. It's not bad. I'd say it's pretty much average, pretty much in the middle. Obviously, liver health is going to affect this too. And I'm still working on, so looking at the mental and emotional level, I'm still working on embodying my, my masculinity. I'm still working on becoming a man. And you would expect that as a consequence, you, may, you might see lower levels of testosterone. You, you could kind of expect that. It would kind of make sense. So not that these are low by, by any means, but they're just not as high as I really would like them to be. So the thing about testosterone as well is it varies a lot. You know, if you have a good night's sleep, you can bump it up 100 points. If you have a bad night's sleep, you can drop it down two or 300, literally in one poor night of sleep. You know, if you stay up late and have alcohol and caffeine, and then you go to bed at three in the morning, you get up at eight o'clock and do a test, your testosterone is going to tank. It's going to be 300 points lower than it normally is. I think I was quite well rested when I did this test. I don't particularly recall. Didn't don't remember it being anything other than an average day. So I think this is pretty a pretty accurate result. And then also down here we've got um, testosterone active. So this is on the lower end, but this is actually a a good thing. The fact that it's lower means that there's more of the testosterone is actually bound to proteins. It's actually working. You know, it's all well and good to have hormones floating around in your blood, but actually flowing around in your blood they're doing nothing the hormone works when the hormone is plugged into the receptor where it's supposed to be or it's connected with the protein or it's doing the function so having a lower level of the amount active in the blood is actually not necessarily a bad thing as long as like the total is is okay because it means the rest of it is bound with proteins and other things that are actually doing stuff which is which is good so finally down here we've got just a couple of interesting things so I have MTHFR C677T heterozygous mutation. So it's really important for me to keep my folate levels at a good place. Otherwise my homocysteine gets really high and I feel really bad. So here you can see my homocysteine on the bottom is in the middle of the range, perfect, completely controlled. I like it, that's awesome. And my folate is towards the upper end, which I'm also very happy with. And this was before I took my folate supplement for that day. So to me, that says I've, I've, I've cracked that symptom wise. I feel awesome. You know, my folate levels, they're not something that worry me anymore. I take a thousand milligrams of methylfolate every single day and it works amazing for me. So this is working. I'm really happy with this. Thiamine, I just wanted to test because mainly because of Elliot Overturn and some other really interesting uh, practitioners talking about how thiamine is so important. I don't think I have a problem here. Again, somewhere in the middle towards the top end of the reference range. Don't have many symptoms of thiamine deficiency. Not really worried about it. Two final things, my vitamin D, my vitamin D and my vitamin B12. And I can talk about these in general. These are both in range. These are both better than my previous results, which is awesome, which is awesome. It's really, really good. But they're not as high as I would like them to be. I would like this vitamin D to be maybe 80. This reference range is not very accurate. They say 30 to 80. I would say a better reference range would be 70 to 150 would be a better reference range. So 
from my own reference range, this is still a little bit low, but again, in context, it's higher than it was before. So this is good. This is moving in the right direction. I'm really happy about that. And my B12 also moving in the right direction as well. This also is a good indicator to me that the B12 supplement that I swapped to is working. So I used to use the methylated B12 injections. They stopped being so good for me. They just didn't make me feel right. I think it was a methylation thing. So I swapped them out for an oral hydroxycobalamin liposomal supplement. And clearly it's working because my levels are, are doing really good. So I'm really happy with that overall. All of this is great. The only place I really see that I need to do some work is the liver from the liver function tests just here. And I'm doing that. I'm doing that. I'm working on it. I'm working with my practitioner. I'm already doing the work there. So as far as that's concerned, I'm, I'm really happy. So I'm just going to ask if anybody's watching, if you have any questions, please just leave me a comment now. I don't think I do, but just on the off chance that anyone is watching, just leave me a comment. I'm just going to have a little cough. Uh, let me know if you have any comments or any questions, and I'd be happy to answer them. <laughs> You can hear I'm starting to lose my voice again. So that's that's the end of the workday for me. <laughs> so that's everything for today. If you do have any questions after the video, so if you're watching this on YouTube, for example, or you're watching this as a, as a recording on Facebook, if you have any questions, just leave me them as a comment. You know, they can be questions about what we talked about today. If you want me to go over your bloods and stuff, I'd be quite happy to do that. If you have any other testing you'd like me to go over, I'd be happy to do that as well. If you want me to use your testing to talk about in a video like this, I would be really happy to do so. So just send me your send me your details. You can email me. I would use the email testing at williamdickinson.co.uk. Email me there. Make sure that you make it clear in the subject of the, of the email that you want me to use these to make a video. And if I do that, I will review your testing like completely for free. And I'll do it in a video because the benefit is. I'm reviewing them, but you're helping me make content, which is valuable to me. So that's really cool. If you want me to review your testing, I can do that as well, but we'll probably need to do that in a consultation. As, again, as I said, testing just gives me, give me some clues. What's really important to me is your symptoms. Your symptoms are the most important thing. So consultation gives me the space for me to review the testing before we talk. And then we can have a consultation where I can talk to you about your symptoms, ask you questions about your past, try and piece together your health mystery and help point you in the right direction. So if you want to do that, there's also a link to that below. So you can just click that link and book a call with me. So if you have any like questions about this, if you have any questions about just some random stuff, if you want me to cover any other particular videos, if you'd like any other testing reviewed, leave it as a comment, let me know. And if you like this video, I really, really encourage you, please tell me, you know, I just took four, what is it now? 45 minutes out of my day I don't feel that good. You know, my throat's really, really sore now to make this video because I really want to help you. You know, I want to empower you. I want you to actually find the results that you're looking for. And this takes effort on my side. So if you appreciate what I do, then I really appreciate when you tell me, you know, leave me a comment, say this is helpful because of this. Share it with somebody, you know, the best thing you can do, like the single best thing you can do to help me is just share my work with other people that it's going to help. Like that, that, that's what I'm in this for. I just want to help other people. So if you help me reach more people and I help more people, like that's amazing. That's really helpful. So if you liked it, please let me know you liked it. If you have questions, please leave your questions and do share it with, with anyone, anywhere you think it would be appreciated. That is everything for me today. I'm going to finish up the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Oh God, I'm so bad with this. I need to figure it out. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. My brain's not there today. No, it's not that one. I'll figure it out eventually. Oh, there we go. <laughs> How embarrassing. <laughs> okay, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.